Historically speaking, we have um, performance art, which is uh, an idea of making art through the body. It, it is not very old. I mean, it's about 40 years or something like this. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And performance has to do with the body. And also, uh, the, a kind of demonstration these days is mm -hmm. also by the body. You mm -hmm. know, the Tunisian man who was burned to death. So can we compose? Uh, can we think that we could compose the idea of performance art as a, a way to demonstrate the human situation when you are in, in just a difficult uh, moment mm -hmm. like this that we are living these days? Well, I mean, I but think... I'm that, thinking about Mona Hatton, that's why I'm asking yeah, that. Yeah, of course, of course. Mona Hatton, the, the, the you know, performance all, all also deals with the figure all, and it deals with the modes of figuring and most of figuration, if you will, and that has to do with the human, you know, subject, as it were. And, but I think that performance is also about processes of subjectivization mm -hmm. and also enables moments of enactment of a will. And in Mona Hatem's case, it is a disciplinary will. It is a will that really is also about duration, it's about endurance, it's about the extremes of, you know, the capacity of the body to endure, mm -hmm. you know, to expose itself, to lay bare the anatomy, if you will, mm -hmm. of the work of art before the public. Mm -hmm. And performance art in this sense is slightly different from theatre, yes. simply because theatre deals with forms of mediation, with illusion, with mise-en-scene and all of that, whereas performance art tends to work more with the immediacy, the abrogation of the boundary between the spectator and the performer. Mm -hmm. And that abrogation of that boundary is something that I think is really powerful and illustrative of the capacity of artists to mm -hmm. use the form, to use the body, mm -hmm. to interrupt or to disrupt mm -hmm. you know, the codes of power that have taken hold of the public sphere that today. So I was quite disappointed to hear there are no demonstrations in Athens today and, uh, and yes. to see, you know, because it is about that sense of immediacy, yes. this abolition of the boundary between mm -hmm. the codes of power mm -hmm. and the will of, of people to act. And this is somehow what performance, you know, does. In many ways, there's a kind of solitude to it especially in the context of the kind of work that Mona Hatun does. And that extreme solitude is also what creates his own of, you know, response, if you will, between, you know, the artist and the spectator. <laughs> A performance that you did some quite a lot of years ago, uh, which is negotiating table. Would would you tell us the story from the beginning? Well, um, the negotiating table is a work that dates back to 1983, uh, and I made it as a reaction to the Israeli invasion of Lebanon, the siege of Beirut, uh, which led to the massacre in the camps of Sabra and Shatila. So it was a bit of like a vigil or a, a kind of. Um, uh, protest uh, work and um, I at the time I toured it uh, in several galleries in Canada and in New York and uh, now we are reconstructing it this time without m myself being yeah. the the person who lies on the table but we're actually getting other people to perform it 
I suppose that it was not easy at all for you when you, you did that in, in uh, 1983, I think. It would be very, very hard for you because you were out of your country and uh, the situations were not so, you know, normal under these circumstances of civil wars, especially. So what kind of decision was that? It was a need, it was a decision, it was a demonstration. What was that? It was like at the beginning of my career, I was quite fearless in many ways. I, I didn't have... Uh, a reputation to live up to so I was doing things that were quite rebellious um, mm -hmm. you know I was quite young and angry and uh, these things seemed to work with my character at the time mm -hmm. so I didn't feel I was doing anything uh, too uh, outrageous because uh, it seemed like the right thing to do especially that I chose the um, form of performance because for me it was a revolutionary kind of form and uh, suited that kind of uh, content that I wanted to express. So um, it seemed to be like something very marginal and very uh, revolutionary and very much on the edge, if you like. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for the people that they don't know your work, and perhaps some of them there are in Greece, you know, and they want to listen to the story, could you please help us to understand the parts of the work? I mean, for the performance, there is a voiceover that, you know, with a narrative, the body and the table. Can you explain to us a little bit these three elements? What, mm. what exactly symbolizes? Well, uh, I mean, obviously it symbolizes a negotiating, t a negotiating table and you have the voices uh, of uh, uh, Western leaders, you know, talking about peace and talking about how they are outraged. And for me, the body symbolizes the reality on the ground. Uh, of the victim, if you like. So it's, it's like, uh, it's a bit of a surreal image. Uh, it's like, you know, a dissecting table or something where the reality is so strong yet, yeah. and you have all these uh, disembodied voices of politicians sort of meaning well, but in fact the reality is still mm -hmm. atrocious and mm -hmm. nothing is being done about it. You mm -hmm. know, in this sense, I feel like it's still relevant to what's happening today. In your work, you use the performance, the body, uh, you use materials, hard materials, like metals uh, or uh, um, raw materials. As I remember, I, when I first saw your work, it was in Centre Bombidou some years ago. Right, with the room that you enter and you have this part of the body, you know. Yes, that's right. So, um, I want to ask you, is there a central idea that you follow mm -hmm. all these years, hmm. no matter what you really use as a material? Yeah, well, um I mean, in the 80s, I worked mostly with uh, political content and narrative in my performance work. I mean, performance lends itself to a kind of narrative or video as well. Uh, but at the end of the 80s, I moved more towards installation and uh, sculpture and photography and all those other media that somehow uh, deals with the same issues or I try to deal with the same issues but in a much more uh, contained, much more implied way to speak through the materials, through the formal qualities, through the aesthetics of the, the object. Um, and therefore I feel there's still the same line of uh, interest in my work but it's more about kind of uh, a feeling of displacement, disorientation, uh, questioning everything around you. Uh, this is what I tried to do in my mm -hmm. recent work. And it's done through the materials, through the phenomenology of the space, the materials, the way you, you experience them with your body. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have replaced my own body in the performances with that of the uh, spectators, the, the viewers who come mm -hmm. and react in a very direct way with those um, materials in the work or the space and the way I set mm -hmm. it up. Mm -hmm. So th this is how it's going yeah. now. about the Arab Spring and the relation that artists uh, have with this uh, period of time in the Arabic world. 
And so Mr. Enviser, who, who have chosen also the work, thinks about how artists can engage the political issues with uh, uh, the spiritual issues. How do you feel about this? It's only been a year and a bit um, that it Less started. That, yes. And uh, it took me a year and a half to actually uh, react to the issue oh. of um, the invasion of Lebanon and the massacre in the camps. So it's something that takes a while. I mean, it's still, we're still in the middle of it. It's, it's mm -hmm. very difficult now to step uh, back and, and look at it uh, because we're still in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you need a little bit of a distance um, because anything you comment about right now might be too il illustrational, if you like. Uh, whereas you need to have a little bit of a distance to see what the outcome before you can actually, as far as I'm concerned, as an artist, engage with the issues. Mm -hmm. um, we're too close to them at the moment. Mm -hmm. I, this is my feeling. Mm -hmm. anyway.